I was talking about the blood moons, and uh, there are two yet to come in this year, one in April and one in September. And I believe the September blood moon is going to be the last one prophesied by Peter on the day of Pentecost. And uh, he will talk about how the spirit will be poured out on all flesh. I believe, now that may not be true, but I believe that that last blood moon will spark the beginning of a worldwide revival when the spirit of God shall be poured out on all flesh. And uh, that's a blood moon. And that will be the super blood moon. And the one before that in April, I believe, will be when everybody in the world wants war in Israel to destroy them. And uh, God will raise up against the nations that are opposed to his covenant people in his covenant land. Okay? All righty. That's Genesis 1.14. talks about the sun and the moon and the stars that God uses as signs of the time. And I could go through scripture and, and show you all the places. The last chapter of the Bible talks about the great morning star. Uh, who is Jesus that will return. But the before that, he said, let there be light. So the existence of light came before the sun and the moon and the stars. The existence of light because God made light and he spoke it into existence and then he created all things by speaking them into existence the power of the tongue of God created all things through Jesus Christ he is called the word and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now God said he's going to make man in his own image, and after his own likeness. It isn't enough just to say image to God. He wanted us to be like him also, and live a life of dominion. So many people walk around, and they are the victim but God says we are to live in dominion. And since God used his tongue as part of that dominion to create all things, he has given us that same ability. He's given us a tongue filled with power. And if your tongue is not used by God, I want you this morning to start thinking about how can I start using my tongue to command the commands of God into existence. And you do that by using the word of God, memorizing it and saying it. Take a look at this verse. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Think about that. I explained that the Greek word logos is the word for word there. In the beginning was the logos. And when it's used in this manner, it is used as a word of decree. Now, if you know anything about the Persian teaching of kings, and I don't think they do that anymore, but they may. But when Persia had kings, the kings were raised in, in their household to learn how to be a king because the kingship was passed on from generation to generation. And the children in the books of the kings of Persia teach this interesting thing, <laughs> that when the king makes a decree, the very person of that king goes out to the four corners of his nation. So the person and the decree are one. King says, everyone has a tax of $50. Everyone imagines the king himself walking into their house, taking their wallet and taking out $50. Okay? And then if the king wanted to conquer the nation next door or any surrounding nation, he would make the decree that his nation now owns the next door nation. 
And that put his army to work to go over and take the old king from that nation and drag him over behind the king's chariot. Uh, oh, I got, this is interesting. When a king came home from war, he brought his chariot. Uh, and when he crossed over to the border of his land from the old land that he conquered, he would have his chariot decorated and beautiful horses pulling it and the slaves and the king of the other nation with his eyes poked out being drugged behind on chains. And the people would come out cheering and throwing gifts into the chariot. You go to the fourth chapter of Ephesians. Jesus came to this earth and conquered through his death and resurrection. And he said that he rose back again to heaven and threw gifts out. And I'm one of the gifts. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm a teacher. I've been a pastor. He threw gifts out. He threw the gifts of the apostle. He threw the gifts of, uh, uh, of the prophet and of the evangelist, the teacher, the pastor. He threw gifts out of the chariot. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's another sermon. I got to get back to the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. So Jesus was the logos, the tongue of God. And he gave command and created all things. So the power of the tongue is in the name of Jesus and the word, the logos of Jesus. When he commands something, it's got to take place. Did that change? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus came to this earth, born of Mary, grew up, and was the word of God. He became flesh. So the word of God became flesh. The tongue of God became flesh. And here we are back at Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 28. We're created the image and after the likeness of God. Because he created all of us with mouths and lips and tongue. Okay? Important stuff. And he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, David knew the secret. He sent his word. So how does healing take place? You don't get up and pray, oh, God, please heal so-and-so. You know how much they need you. They're hurt bad. We pray that you just... Uh, <laughs> I, d I don't know whether I told this story before. Some of you have got to have heard it. When I was around four years old, I got whooping cough. And back then, that was before penicillin. And my throat started closing up. And I, the doctor came to the house, Dr. Sedman from over in Knoxon. <laughs> Everybody knows what that is, don't you? It's when we lived near Harvey's Lake, Pennsylvania, and up near Scranton. The doctor came over and uh, gave me some kind of pill that tasted awful and it didn't do a thing. And my mom put me in a crib next. It was a, a low crib. It, it was my little bed. And pulled it next to her and my dad and the night. And it came to a point where I had quit breathing and because I was, my throat swelled short, shut and, and I was dying. Now, my dad is an Assembly of God preacher, was an Assembly of God preacher. He's with Jesus now. And she pounded him on the back and said, Bill, get up. Jackie's dying. They called me Jackie. Isn't that cute? And... Uh, before she did that, he had had a dream. He dreamt that she had done that, pounded on him and said, get up and pray for Jackie's dying. 
And he dreamt that he came around the bed, laid hands on me, <laughs> commanded the sickness to get out of my body right now. He'd never done that before. He'd always prayed those good old-fashioned Baptist prayers of, God, if it be thy will, heal. And if you don't, we'll understand. And, uh, <laughs> and, and some people even say, if you don't have the power to do this, it's okay. We still love you. And <laughs> so he dreamt that he commanded sickness out of my body. And that's when she pounded on me and said, Jack, Jack, he's dying. You've got to pray for him. And he came around. Uh, he sat up on the bed and I thought, didn't this just happen? What's going on? And I prayed different than I've ever prayed before. And then she pounded him again. You've got to pray for him. And so he came around and he prayed that prayer. And I was instantly healed. In fact, I started breathing normal, not squeaking through my throat. And my fever, which had been very high, was now all gone. And my mother put her hand over me and felt me cool and didn't hear any breathing. And she said, oh, he's dead. <laughs> and then, th then she looked closer and found I was normal. <laughs> and I was up playing the next day. Everything was OK. But my dad commanded my healing. So that's when I was four. I learned that. <laughs> it was after that my dad got books on the commands and the, uh, wh what was Macmillan? Uh, the, uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland put that back out not too long ago and, and Billy Brim, because uh, it had gone out of print. Um, McDonald, uh, the authority of the believer. Um, yeah, McMillan. And uh, my dad got that when it was first printed back in the 40s and, uh, and fed off of it and went around, prayed for everybody he could see <laughs> and commanded healing into their bodies. But that happened to me right at the beginning of my life. Thank you, Jesus. He sent his word to heal them. Sent his word. And speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Now that's interesting and important. This is when... Moses was commanded, the first time was commanded of God, strike the rock with your rod and, and, and cause it to bring forth water, which he did, and it brought forth water and everything was, they all drank and uh, cattle and everything. And then the people were commanding him, you better do something again or we're dying, we'll kill you and all that. And he was angry and God said, speak to the rock, Moses. Speak to it. But he was angry and went out and clubbed it with his and changed the course of God's plans for the day. Because that would be the first time in Scripture that someone would speak a word of authority with their tongue and not have a rod or a mantle or something that they needed to perform the miracles of God. Just talk. The first time since the fall that man would take back his dominion with his mouth. God was upset with Moses. You know what happened to Moses? He got all the way to the promised land, was not allowed to go in because he had not spoken when God said speak. And so you go through scripture and there's only one place you get close and it's when Isaiah had an angel come and put the flame of the altar, the coal from the altar on his tongue because the tongue was a condemned thing for speaking the word of God until then. And even then, you don't find anybody in the Bible speaking anything into existence until Jesus came.
Moses striking the rock, and then there's another. Moses lifted up his hand with his rod, and he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, <laughs> and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. But his tongue was not loosed. Man's tongue was not loosed. For he taught them as one having authority Until. and not as the scribes. Until Jesus came. And when Jesus finally came, he taught with the anointing on the tongue. And people sat there because they were used to hearing scribes teach. And priests and all those guys, they would get up and teach. And everybody would say, he's, he's a good teacher. Yeah, go home. And then Jesus came. And he spoke and authority and anointing came out of his mouth. They'd never seen that before. What's causing him to teach like this? Even when he was 12 and, and was in the temple with the scribes and Pharisees and priests, and he started teaching, the, they wondered what coming out of a boy's mouth. What is this? What is this? They couldn't believe that it was happening. <laughs> and you remember when he read the passage from uh, uh, oh, what was Isaiah and, and, and the people heard that passage. That, that was the given passage for that time. Th they read these scriptures at different times of the prophets and, and he, he gave that scripture and they were amazed and especially when he said this day this thing which you've heard has come to pass. And they were so torn up over that they wanted to kill him. Uh, sometimes the anointing does that. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. God opened the door to the power of the tongue in this scripture for all people. To you. To you. If you decide that you're going to use the scripture and command things into existence, it must take place. If you'll believe. It must take place. This is an important thing to realize that God has released the power of the tongue back to man in this scripture. And it's released to every one of us in this room, to our children, to everybody. The power of the scripture is fully released. And God wants the release of his word in the world today. There'll be a great revival coming, I believe, at the end of this year. And I, I believe that red moon is going to cause that to take place. I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out on all flesh. But that isn't the secret. It's the next verse after that. Your sons and daughters will speak, prophesy. They will speak prophetic things. And that's what the power of the tongue does. Prophetic things will take place. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Do you hear that? Everybody says, Well, we know nothing's impossible with God. No, 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 no. Jesus said, nothing's impossible to you. We forget that verse. How many have forgotten that verse? You're, some of you have. Nothing's impossible to you. Look at your greatest needs and greatest challenges and start commanding things to come to pass. Your children are sick. What does the Bible say? The seed of the righteous are delivered. Your children are lost. What does the Bible say? The seed of the righteous are delivered. 
Well, I didn't raise him up in the way he should go. But you're saved now. He's delivered. She's delivered. Well, they're on drugs. Deliverance in Jesus' name comes to them. They're off drugs now. God said it. I believe it. It must come to pass. Jesus is our healer. He had his word sent forth to perform that. He is the savior of our children. He sends forth his word to do that. He has sent it forth. It comes to pass. He who comes from above heaven is far above all others. He who comes from the earth belongs to the earth and talks the language of the earth. These words are from an earthly standpoint. His words are from an earthly standpoint. He who comes from heaven is far above all others, far superior to all others in prominence and in excellence. Amplified Bible. So where are we from? Well, I'm from Columbia, <laughs> Marietta. No, 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 no. Let's take a quick look at the word born again. That's a bad Greek translation. Greek word is a nun. And it means born from above. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you have a different origination point. It isn't the Columbia Hospital anymore. You are born from above. You have a new bloodline. You have a new father. You have a new brother. This Jesus is your brother. And he is your joint heirs with him. I'm joint heirs with Jesus. That means our dad's the same dad. Oh, that's another sermon. We now live in, a, in, in the last age before the coming of Christ. In the 40s, the name of Jesus was exalted and healings took place and healing evangelists. And then in the 50s and then 60s, the charismatic renewal, people began speaking in tongues in Methodist churches. It was wonderful. And, and now, what age is it now? It's the age of Abba. You know who Abba is? Daddy. Do you remember when that man and woman in India were a terrorist attack and they, they lived in a Jewish center and some terrorists came in and killed them and they had a little daughter and the Indian maid got her out of the house so she wasn't killed and later took her back to Israel. And, and I remember watching the news footage. footage. I watched Israeli news, uh, Arus Shaba, Channel 7 News, and uh, you can get that online. And uh, here is this Indian woman bringing this little girl to give to her grandparents. And here she is crying. You know what she's crying? Papa, Papa, Papa. Her daddy was dead. But she was still crying, Abba. And I cry, Abba, every day. And thank him for giving me his son, Jesus. Thank him for pouring out the Holy Spirit on me. Oh, Abba, this is the last days. This is the days of Abba. And we exalt you and praise you, Abba. You are so wonderful. You are my daddy. Hallelujah. You are my daddy. I have a new origination point. I'm not just born again. I'm born from above. I'm born from heaven. I come from heaven now. My heritage is heaven. Heaven is where I'm from. Oh, God, I'm seated right next to you inside of Jesus Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus answered him, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again anew from above, he cannot see or know or be acquainted or experience the kingdom of God. Born from above. See, in the Amplified, they did born again, and then they did the correct Greek translation, born from above. 
So you who have asked Jesus into your heart, you are born from above. Heaven. Your daddy is God. Your brother is Jesus. You join heirs with him. You inherit a throne. You're seated next to the Father's right hand. Oh, I love the right hand of God. It's the right hand in Hebrew, the Ben Yaman. Ben Yaman. The son of the right hand. For since he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, proclaims God's own message, God does not give him his spirit sparingly or by measure, but boundless is the gift of God makes, is the gift God makes of his spirit. Boundless? It was boundless when he created them and the earth. Uh, you know, I have a physics and science background and and uh, I've studied the atom all the way down now to its... Uh, are you aware that there is a string theory out there now? How many have heard of the string theory? There is a literal voice inside of every atom. That's why the Bible says that the trees and the rocks will cry out praises to God. They can. He created them with a voice. Subatomic particles are strings that make sound. Well, hmm. boundless. Oh, I got to tell you. But when they deliver you up, take no thought of how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. That means when you're delivered up before a court that wants to charge you with believing in Jesus, which may come sooner than you think, uh, oh, you're okay if you want to be a Muslim. That's okay. You kill people. But Jesus loved people. <coughs> Satan hates that. and He'll get everybody around you to hate that too. But if you get delivered up in a court for your Christianity, Holy Spirit's going to be there. Fill your mouth with things that they won't be able to answer. He will fill your mouth. In your worst situations, you will have the words right from the Holy Spirit into your mouth. Praise God. For it is not that ye shall speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. <laughs> How do you like that? Your daddy's going to talk in you and through you when you need it. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of Now, right there, the word witness means to say the same thing as. The power of the Holy Ghost comes within you, and you will say the same thing as Jesus says. Go ahead. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Oh, by the way, if you notice, part is singular. If you draw a line from where this was spoken in Jerusalem right on through the earth, guess where you come out? The uttermost part. Australia. Okay. In other words, my witness will go right around this earth to the uttermost part, Sydney, Australia. Okay? God got it all covered. You don't have to worry. It's all taken care of. And his Holy Spirit's here this morning to give you the word of witness, the word of healing, the word of command, the word of prosperity. Oh, you can't find a job? In Jesus' name, I command a job that you will love come to you this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This week, you will get a phone call. I think this is about it. Oh, not, not, not quite. Distance. This is a, a really bad picture. 
of the man who came to Jesus who was a centurion. He was a Roman soldier. He wasn't even a Jew. He had a servant boy who was dying of an illness. And he saw Jesus healing anybody around. And so he came and he says, my servant boy is dying of an illness. And uh, can, you, can, you, can you just speak the word? Jesus was going to head to his house, which says something amazing because Jews weren't allowed in the houses of Gentiles. And this man was a Gentile, even dressed Gentile in the robe of a, 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 of a soldier of the army of Rome. Let's go over these scriptures. But the centurion, centurion replied to him, Lord, I am not worthy or fit to have you come under my roof. But only speak the word and my servant boy will be cured. Just say the word. <laughs> Just say the word. You got a, a loved one homesick? Say the word here. She'll be healed. He'll be healed. Child will be healed. Say the word. He sent his word to heal them and yeah. deliver them from all their sicknesses. Just say the word. Hallelujah. And he had some more to say here, which is pretty good. For I also am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. If I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard him, he marveled and said to him, those who followed him, who had adhered steadfastly to him, conforming to his example in living, and if need be, in dying also, I tell you truly, I have not found so much faith as this with anyone, even in Israel. <laughs> he outfaced all the Jews. I uh, love that. This Gentile, he outfaced them all. I just put a breath mint in so that I would pray for people and won't make them fall over. <laughs> I want the power of God to do that. Father, I thank you for your power. I thank you for the word that you have placed in our mouth. In my mouth, I'm going to command healing. In Jesus' name. It'll take place. The glory of God will descend on the church. The power of the Most High is here. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everyone stand, please. Most important thing you can do is make sure your life is giving completely to Jesus. Listen to me. You'll go to hell without salvation and you're headed there if you have not had Jesus come in and wash away all your sins with his precious blood. He wants to do that. I tell you that in the authority of the word of God. Jesus wants to save you now. And you who need Jesus I want you to step from where you're standing and come forward. We're going to pray for you. You who need healing in your bodies, you come forward also. Jesus is going to heal you. I'm going to command healing into you. Just like that two-year-old that got healed of a sugar problem, Jesus is going to heal some more sugar problems today. Arthritis has got to go. Come up here now. Come up here now. People who need Jesus, you come up here. People who need healing, come up here. Jesus is going to heal you.